Hi, I'm Jay Novella, and I'm a co-host of The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. We're a science and critical thinking podcast, and we've been doing it for 15 years. We have over 750 episodes, and I'm also a producer and host of Alpha Quadrant 6, which is a science fiction review show. We're in Melbourne, Australia. We're at a Skeptics Conference, Skepticon 2019, and uh, I had the opportunity to, to speak during the conference a couple of times and meet all the awesome Australians. I'm a co-host on The Skeptics Guide to the Universe. Uh, we have over 750 episodes and we're in our 15th year. Okay, great. <laughs> so, um, yes, futurology, um, one of my favorite subjects. So what got you interested in futurology yourself? It has to go back to just being into science fiction when we were kids. Um, you know, I think that science fiction it has such a futuristic outlook and there's good, you know, there's good and bad versions of it. But my brothers and I were always just super into, you know, kind of deconstructing the technology and talking about what we thought the technology would be and what technology do we want. So it's an endless discussion about all the different things that we liked about science fiction. It had, it had to be our love for science fiction. Our dad got us into science fiction when we were kids. Um, and what we would love to do is talk about the shows that we were watching, the technology that we saw on those shows, and we would reverse engineer how the technology worked. We would talk about like, what technology we would want or you know, what would be something that we hope that happens in the next 10, 15, 20 years. So it, it definitely goes back to science fiction. Mm -hmm. Definitely, me too. So um, what is it, like another word for science fiction is um, speculative fiction. Do you, think there's, uh, do you think we can learn anything from some of the ways that science fiction writers have um, taken views of the future? Yeah, if you think about it, a lot of science fiction is talking about the philosophy of science. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so there's there's these aspects that they have to explore territories that that you know haven't been uh, explored before. And I, as an example, like life extension, you know, has been talked about quite a bit with science fiction. That's fascinating. You know, we, what would it be like if we were in a world that had uh, the ability to let people live forever, or even just tens of thousands of years? Um, and you know things from long-term space travel to interfacing with aliens. All that is just so incredibly fun and fascinating. And the science fiction writers, like they're the first people that are really thinking about it. Definitely. Actually, I've interviewed a few science fiction writers. One of them came up with the term technological singularity. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Um, um, so yeah, I mean it, we, we're beginning to see some pretty interesting developments in artificial intelligence. Some say that we're going to hit a wall pretty soon again, and there'll be uh, the, the this current hype cycle will be over. Others say, well, we're on to a new paradigm that's causing of AI, for instance. Um, what are your thoughts on the future of artificial intelligence? I think without a doubt, at some point within hundreds of years, and it could be, the spectrum could be anywhere along, along that time frame, that we're going to achieve some type of artificial intelligence. But general artificial intelligence is really mimicking the way that a human mind works. And I think that's going to be, that's, if any type of artificial intelligence is going to become conscious, that's going to be it. And it's going to be a big deal, because we're talking about creating life at that point. It doesn't have to even have a body, but if, there, if it does achieve consciousness, it's, it's serious. And I, I find, like, what do you do? Do this? Does it have rights? Do we have to talk about before we get there? Do we have to talk about what kind of rights we would give these kinds of creatures? And we wouldn't call them human, but they'd have to be considered sentient and and ha and have some type of right to live, to think, to breathe. And then another interesting question is, how long do they live? Do we give them a lifespan? Because they, they could theoretically live indefinitely because their their parts are swappable. I don't know. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Maybe we could interface with them or sort of merge with them as anyone might like to say. And, uh, I totally agree. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to merge. We will be the AI. Our cell phones are orders of magnitude more powerful than all the computing power than and any moon mission ever had. You know? Yeah, I mean, we have supercomputers in our pockets now, and we take them for granted. And imagine, you know, if they got taken away from us, everyone would completely freak out. So we're dependent on them. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's, it's also when you think about like AI, um, the sort of things you could do with the intelligence, what capability games could we and the AI possibly have if it could solve the sorts of problems that we're struggling with? I mean, it, anything that's possible um, in this universe is either available to us or not available to us based on our ability to solve the problems required to achieve it, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's a very difficult question to ask and to answer. Um, I think that, that first off, they would be able to think a lot faster than people. 
you know, we they might be able to do tens of thousands of hours of research in moments. So this would speed everything up. I mean, we would be achieving, um, you know, getting rid of disease and solving really complicated problems. Like even like like a simple thing like traffic. It's a complicated problem. You know, with AI might be able to see it in a way that we can't ever perceive and, and give us an answer on how to deal with it. Overpopulation, you know, growing food, you know, simple things like filtering water. They might be able to just come up with things that we, a human mind would never think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the coordination problems are, would an AI be able to help us solve problems of value, ethics, ethical problems? That's, I don't know, man, that's a tough one. I mean, I think that humans have, we do have problems dealing with with ethical issues, but I would question like, what's the consciousness going to be like, and would ethics even be a part of its equation? You know, I don't know. We, it would, at that point, it would be what we program into it. Um, I, I really don't know. That's a really nebulous question that I would love to hear someone that really has thought about it before answer. Right now, I would say my gut's telling me no. Uh, let's get in the back. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But there's less people. We started a science fiction review show about two and a half years ago. We decided that uh, we couldn't really talk about it on our main podcast as much as we wanted to. And uh, so we, you know, we started off really following uh, Star Trek Discovery Series 1, but then we just spilled into general science fiction, movies, everything, because we're just massive fans <laughs> on the whole thing. And it's, uh, of course, there's an endless amount of things to, to discuss. And that's exactly what we do. We, we watch a movie and we'll discuss it for days, you know, like we just keep turning it over. And, you know, not just, ju not just the cool things that were in the movie, but how well was it made and details about sound effects and lighting. We just love the filmmaking process. So it's all part of the stuff that we talk about. Definitely. Some of the movies that I've, I've really enjoyed um, in the science fiction arena has been Her. You remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, the guy falls in love with his operating yeah. system. And, yeah. you know, this operating system gains sentience and learns the ability to feel yeah. through... And she's know, cheating like, on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, with hundreds of people. Yeah, like, well, that's what would happen. That's why when you ask me about it, it's like, I don't know what's going to be like. We don't know what it's going to be like. Yeah. yeah, I definitely liked it. I mean, you know, any movie that doesn't have tons of explosions in it and that's it's making you think about the idea or the concept behind the film to me is some of my favorite filmmaking because it's all happening up here you know I don't I don't have to be wooed by explosions anymore as a matter of fact I'm bored of all that I want something that really makes me think about reality and this is going to happen that movie is going to happen at some point at some level somewhere a human is going to be faced with like having romantic feelings for a legit AI and what the hell is going to happen uh, so yeah, it's super fascinating. I do believe some people, some young men, have romantic feelings towards game characters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why they make them with big boobs, right? I mean, it's, they are attractive, and you know, the, the newer games, you know, you're developing relationships with, with you know, fictional people, and you know, I, you know, it's, it, it, there's something sad about it too because there's real people out there to interact with, but gaming is just be simulating reality more and more and more, and we're going to get to the point where immersion in a VR world is going to be no different than the meat space. The, the, the relationships and the experiences will be just as valid. Another movie um, was uh, Juice X. Did you watch that? So I know the video game. I didn't see the film. Wow, the film. Yeah, definitely watched it. Yeah. But did you, I, I also played the, the video game, especially Human Revolution. Yeah. That was a really That's the best one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. That was an interesting take on transhumanism as well, right? Yeah, and I thought that the uh, the writers of that game really dug into the meat of, of that topic. I mean, they, they really explored. I mean, I was being blown away by, by all the things that they brought up in the game. I can't remember all the details now, but I, I, you know, I remember playing the game going like, damn, they really dug into this. And I, I was like, it was like a freak show in my mind, realizing all the concepts that they came up with. So longevity is something that I absolutely think we're going to be able to, at the very least, I think we're going to be able to extend human lifespan. But let's face it, you know, CRISPR is, is, is in its infancy. It's already doing remarkable things. And if we're going to need a tool to do something that's going to be able to change the, the problem of aging, that, that CRISPR is probably going to be one of the key technologies that we use to do it. 
Um, and it is a fascinating subject just to think about what would happen if we could, you know, greatly expand human lifespan. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a very difficult thing to deal with because right now, you know, you, you, I don't really believe that the world is overpopulated yet, but it will be. And then probably in, within the next light, you know, next generation is going to deal with some type of overpopulation issue. Um, and I think that that's going to be a, a problem because it might just be available to rich people or people that are politically connected. You know, it's going to be a very difficult thing to deal with on a social aspect. But it is fascinating to think about what, what would a human consciousness be like that existed for 10,000 years. So as an example, when somebody dies, you know, you get a 70, 80, 90 year old person that spent their whole life filling their head with information. You know, an expert in a field or whatever, just anybody. You know, my mother-in-law is an example. She's a, a brilliant cook. And everything that she knows is, is gonna die with her. You know, you can't do a transfer of knowledge like you think. You know, it, I think the idea of a consciousness existing for, you know, millennia, but what would that be like? Is it going to be human? Would, it, would we even be able to remotely think of it as a human? But just think about the, the ability for a, a brain that's been alive that long to make connections with things. You ever like read a vampire novel and like, the author is constantly trying to like, what would, a, what would a vampire be like? What would a person be like that's been alive for 500 years? Well, you know, their head would be filled with information. They'd be able to speak multiple languages. You hope, right? Multiple languages, multiple ways of looking at problems and coming up with solutions. Um, being able to read, you know, human nature, being able to read, you know, the subtleties of the way people do things that, in order to gain information out of that, you know, all of that, that's the, the t potential. I just want to see a, a metahuman and what would, would they be like? I want to ask them, you know, what's important to you? You know, are things going to be important to them? Is love going to be important? I don't know. Just don't know. Yeah, science is the the thing that humans do that really, in my opinion, gives us the greatest achievements. I mean, art is absolutely important, philosophy is important, but you know, science just as a practice is giving us more than anything else in, that I think humanity has ever done. Um, but you know, philosophy is also woven into that, but the mechanics of science give us real things, science delivers.